Hey everyone, welcome back to the distance learning version of our course. Uh, this lecture we're going to talk a little bit more about Gettier cases. So last class lecture we talked about uh, justified true belief as an account of knowledge and the Gettier cases that showed that justified true belief doesn't work. So today we're going to look at some ways to try to revise and strengthen the account to avoid Gettier cases. And then we're going to look at Gettier cases that undermine those attempts. Uh, and the upshot is just really going to be that it's very difficult to give an account of what knowledge actually is and what it takes to have knowledge. Every account that I know of, every account that is available, uh, has some, at least one Gettier case that is known uh, to cause problems for it. So, quick recap, what is justified true belief? Justified true belief is the account of knowledge that says what it means for a person to know something just is that the person believes it, that the thing they believe is true, and that their belief is justified. They have a justification for their belief. So you know that the earth is flat if and only if you believe that the earth is flat, the earth really is flat, and your belief that the earth is flat is justified. You have some evidence or justification for your belief. Now, as it happens, you can't know that the earth is flat because the earth is flat is just not a true thing. That's, that's not a true fact about the world. So you can't possibly know it. But there are lots of things you can know. When it's raining, you might know that it's raining. You might know that Kevin Bacon was in the movie Footloose. You might know that Millard Fillmore was a uh, president of the United States. You can know lots of things as long as you have a belief, that belief is true, and it's justified or so the account of knowledge says, or so justified true belief accounts claim. But as we saw last class, that account doesn't quite work because you can have a justified true belief and still not have knowledge. You can still lack knowledge, even if you have a justified true belief. So what do we do? The problem for the justified true belief account is the Gettier cases. So we need an account that will avoid the Gettier cases that we looked at. We need uh, to avoid the Clock case the and the Smith and Jones case, and there are lots of other increasingly convoluted Gettier cases uh, that cause problems for the view. So if you remember the Gettier cases from last class, there's uh, Smith believes that the person who's going to get the promotion has 10 coins in their pocket, and Smith's belief is true, because Smith has 10 coins in their pocket and Smith is going to get the promotion. And Smith's belief is justified because Smith has good evidence that Jones has 10 coins in their pocket and Jones will get their promotion. But Smith's belief, Smith's justified true belief, the person who's going to get the promotion has 10 coins in their pocket, is based on a false belief. Jo Smith only comes to that belief because Smith wrongly believes that Jones is going to get the promotion. And it looks like that's the problem. That's the issue that's preventing Smith from having knowledge, is that Smith's belief, although it is true and although it is justified, it's based on a false belief, and so it doesn't count as knowledge. Similarly, in the clock case where uh, Alice looks at a clock, the clock says it's 1 p.m., it is 1 p.m., so Alice comes to have a justified true belief that it's 1 p.m., but the clock is broken. Alice's justification, Alice's belief that it's 1 p.m., is based on her false belief that the clock works. The clock's actually broken, so it doesn't give her the evidence she thinks it does. So her belief is justified, but that justification involves the false belief the false belief that the clock works. And Smith's justification relies on the false belief that Jones is going to get the promotion. So you might think, or we might think, all right, we just have to rule that out. What we need is an account of knowledge, a fourth condition added to our justified true belief account of knowledge that says to know something, you have a belief, 
that belief is true, that belief is justified, and that belief is not derived from any false beliefs, or that justification does not involve any false beliefs. So justified, true belief that is not derived from any false beliefs. And that's going to be, an, that's one account, right? That's a fourth condition on knowledge that gives us a new account of knowledge. And that's going to be enough to prevent the original Gettier cases we looked at. Because it's going to rule out Alice. It's going to explain why Alice doesn't have knowledge when she looks at the clock and comes to believe that it's one o'clock when it really is one o'clock. Because her belief, although it's true and justified, it fails that fourth condition. Her belief is derived from a false belief. Namely, the belief that the clock's not broken, that the clock works. And Smith's belief, although it is true and justified, Smith's belief that the person who's going to get the promotion has 10 coins in their pocket, that's also ruled out as knowledge by this account, as it needs to be, because Smith's belief is derived from a false belief that Jones is going to get the promotion. So this fourth condition that we can add to the account, this uh, the belief is not derived from any false beliefs condition, seems to rule out the Gettier cases that we have. And so that might be a good account of knowledge, or at least a better account of knowledge. However, there are revised versions of the Gettier case. There are other Gettier cases that raise problems for this account of knowledge as well. So let's look at one of them. Uh, the Gettier case that I want to look at is called Fake Barn Country. Thought experiments have to be weird uh, to work sometimes. So this is uh, going to be a little weird, but it should be easy to understand at least, even if it's just kind of weird. So let's say you're driving through an area that you've never been in before. You've never been to this area before, but you're driving around and you see a barn on the side of the road. And you believe, because you see the barn, you believe that you're looking at a barn. You come to believe that you're looking at a barn. Right? And it is a barn. It really is a barn. So your belief is true. And your belief is justified because you're looking at what clearly seems to be a barn. You, if you're not justified in believing the things you see are there, then no one's justified in anything. So seeing a barn at the side of the road clearly justifies your belief that there's a barn on the side of the road. However, the, the area you're driving through that you've never been in before is fake barn country. It's an area full of cardboard barn facades. A facade is a fancy word that means like, uh, it's just the front and there's nothing in the back. It's just a painted two-dimensional thing standing up to look like a barn. So it's cardboard barn facades, these two-dimensional cardboard cutouts, basically, that are meant to look just like barns, at least from the road. They're made to look just like real barns from the road, uh, but they're not real barns. So you are looking at a real barn. You're looking at the one real barn in all of fake barn country. But you could have easily driven past a fake barn instead. And let's say on your drive, you pass lots of these fake barns. And each time you look at the barn or the barn facade, the cardboard cutout of a barn, and you believe it's a real barn. And you see it and you come to believe, have a justified false belief that you're looking at a barn in all of those cases. So... As you drive through fake barn country, you have justified beliefs all over that you're looking at a barn. There's a barn there, a barn there, a barn there, a barn there. You come to believe that you're looking at a barn, may, let's say every mile, every, mi every mile, every half mile, you come to see what looks like a barn. And one of them really is a barn, but the rest are not. The rest are fake barns. And you're equally justified in every case because you see what looks exactly like a barn in every case. 
So you have the same justification in every case, but in most cases, your belief is false. Justified, but false. But in one case, your belief is true. So you have a justified true belief in that one case. So it looks like when you see the real barn, you don't know that there's a barn there. You have a justified true belief, but you don't know because you had the same justification at all the fake barns and you believed it then too. So it looks like you don't know that there's a barn there. And if you were asked about it later and told there was only one real barn, you wouldn't have been able to say which one was the real one. So you don't, you don't really have any special evidence when it's the real barn versus the evidence you have when it's all the fake barns. So you have a justified true belief that you're looking at a real barn, at least the one time it is a real barn. And your belief when looking at the real barn, is not based on any false beliefs. It's not derived from any false beliefs. Sure, you're not aware that you're in fake barn country, but you don't have a false belief that you're not in fake barn country. You've never heard of fake barn country. You have no idea what fake barn country is. You have no idea there's any such thing as fake barn country. So you don't believe that you're not in fake barn country, that that's just not a belief you have. So it looks like your belief in this case meets the fourth condition for knowledge, our stronger condition on our new revised account of knowledge, the condition that your belief is not derived from any false beliefs. It looks like in the fake barn case, you have a justified true belief and it's not derived from any false beliefs. It's derived, it's not derived from any beliefs except the barn in front of you. You see what looks like a barn, and that directly causes your belief that there's a barn in front of you. There's no, you're not doing the Smith thing where you're like, okay, so Jones is gonna get the promotion, and Jones has 10 coins in their pocket, therefore, there is one person who both will get the promotion and has 10 coins in their pocket, so the person who's going to get the promotion, you're like, you're not doing this sort of logical inference thing. You, you look at a barn and you say, hey, there's a barn. That's it. Whole derivation right there. No false beliefs involved. So it looks like this account of knowledge fails too. There are Gettier cases for this version of knowledge or this account of knowledge as well, because there are cases or hypothetical or real where you meet all four conditions. You have a justified true belief that is not derived from any false beliefs. You meet all four conditions and yet do not have knowledge. Because in the fake barn case, your belief that you're looking at a barn, it's a belief, it's true, it's justified, and it's not derived from any false beliefs. And yet you still don't know that it's a barn because you have the false belief every time you see a fake barn. You don't have any idea that there are all these fake barns around. You, ha you believe that you're looking at a barn let's say a hundred times when you drive through this country and only one time do you happen to be right, more or less through sheer luck. And so it still doesn't count as knowledge. So this account of knowledge fails. But why it fails is an interesting and worthwhile uh, question. What causes us not to have knowledge in the fake barn case? And it looks like we don't have knowledge because our belief isn't reliable. The reason we don't have knowledge in that case seems to be because we get the same belief all over the place as we drive through fake barn country. We have a belief we're looking at a barn, you know, every mile or so. But we're wrong most of the time. So we're wrong about whether or not we're looking at a barn. So our belief and the way we form the belief by seeing something that looks just like a barn, that's not a reliable source of knowledge. We get it wrong driving through fake barn country at least as often as we get it right, more often. We get it wrong more often than we get it right. So, the, so this leads to what are called tracking accounts. And we, you watched a little YouTube video about them. Uh, so a tracking account is 
an account of knowledge that was introduced to try to avoid these Gettier cases, try to explain what goes wrong in Gettier cases like the fake barn case. And so the idea behind the tracking accounts is that in order to know something, your belief has to be reliable. It has to track the truth, hence the name tracking accounts. So a tracking account of knowledge says that your belief has to be reliable. And the way they cash out reliable, so the way you sort of end up with a reliable belief is by having a belief such that if the thing you believe was not true, you would not believe it. And if it were true, then you would believe it. So if it's not true, or if it were not true, you would not believe it. In a hypothetical, sufficiently similar case, if it had turned out to be false, you wouldn't have believed it, right? So a tracking account says that knowledge has to track the truth, meaning that whether or not you believe something would change based on whether or not the thing you believe were actually true. So in the clock case, for example, your belief that it's one o'clock or Alice's belief that it's one o'clock doesn't track the truth because if it weren't one o'clock, if the belief it is one o'clock was false, then the clock would still say that it's 1 p.m. And so Alice would still believe that it was 1 p.m. So in that sense, Alice's belief in that Gettier case does not track the truth because if her belief weren't true, if it weren't one o'clock, she would still believe it because the clock, the clock, which is broken, would still say that it's one o'clock. And that's how she formed her belief, was by looking at the clock. So Alice's belief does not track the truth. And so that explains why Alice doesn't have knowledge. Her belief doesn't count as knowledge, even though it's justified and true, because it isn't reliable. It doesn't track the truth. If it weren't one o'clock, she would still believe it. And so this seems to give us the right answer in the fake barn case also, in the fake barn country example. Because if you were driving through fake barn country, you look out the window, see something that looks like a barn, and come to believe that it's a barn. But in fake barn country, that is not a reliable way to form beliefs. That is not a truth tracking method of forming beliefs because most of the things that look like barns aren't. So if, when you're looking at the real barn, if it were a facade, if it were a cardboard barn, a fake barn, you would still believe that it was a real barn because you don't realize that you're in fake barn country. You don't know there's any such thing. So your belief doesn't track the truth. If it weren't a real barn, you would still believe that there was a real barn there. Right, so it looks like you get the right answer for the Gettier cases from the tracking account. Right. However, there's a revised version of the fake barn country get your case that poses a problem for the tracking account and the revised version is this suppose that all of the fake barns in fake barn country are blue they're all blue fake barns and as you drive through fake barn country you look at a red barn and it really is about it really is a red barn it's a real barn so all of the fake barns are blue and you're looking at a red barn. Both of those beliefs are true, right? Or both beliefs are true, both that you are looking at a barn and that you're looking at a red barn. So you form both of those beliefs. You're looking at a barn and you're looking at a red barn. You believe both of those things and both of those beliefs are true. However, only one of those beliefs meets the tracking condition for knowledge. There are added fourth condition to the account of knowledge. So if you were looking at one of the blue fake barns, 
then you would still believe you were looking at a barn and you'd be wrong. So your belief that you're looking at a barn does not track the truth. Because if you were looking at one of the fake barns, all of which are blue, you would still believe you were looking at a barn. You would think you were looking at a blue barn, but you would still believe you were looking at a barn. So your belief that you're looking at a barn does not track the truth and does not count as knowledge. Therefore, you don't know that you're looking at a barn. However, there are no fake red barns. So if you weren't looking at a red barn, you would not believe that you were looking at a red barn because you would be looking at a fake blue barn instead. There are only fake blue barns in this country. There are no fake red barns. So your belief that you're looking at a red barn is reliable. Because if you were looking at a fake barn, you would not believe you were looking at a red barn because there are no fake red barns. So your belief that you're looking at a red barn is reliable and tracks the truth and meets the tracking condition. So your belief you're looking at a red barn counts as knowledge because it's a justified true belief that meets the tracking conditions that if it were false, you would not believe it. So you do know that you're looking at a red barn. But that's weird now because we've said you don't know that you're looking at a barn, but you do know that you're looking at a red barn. And pretty clearly, if you're looking at a red barn, then you're looking at a barn. Like all red barns are barns. Not all barns are red, but all red barns are barns. So if you know you're looking at a red barn, it seems like you really should know that you're looking at a barn. If you can't safely reason from, I'm looking at a red barn to I'm looking at a barn and still have knowledge, then what is logic for? Like why, what is, how are we supposed to think through things if logic can't preserve knowledge? Uh, that, that just seems weird. That's, uh, that seems like a problem that you can know you're looking at a red barn, but not know that you're looking at a barn. And that's been uh, enough of an objection for a lot of people that, to reject the tracking account. Now, uh, Robert Nozick, who you may remember from his many thought experiments criticizing utilitarianism, He's the one who invented and proposed the tracking account, and he liked that feature. He thought the, fa the fact that you could know you were looking at a red barn, but not know you were looking at a barn, that that was the solution to what we're going to talk about next class, in the next two classes, and that's external world skepticism. So we'll talk about external world skepticism on Thursday and on Tuesday next week. Uh, if you have any questions, Please let me know. Stay safe out there.